This is the floor plan uh, and an elevation view for the Falling Water House. Uh, again, it was called Falling Water because uh, in the picture here, it's the artistic picture I have here, um, it was near a stream and uh, there was falling water, you know. For, this is one thing. The other thing that uh, Frank uh, Lloyd Wright was known for was giving his houses very interesting names. Um, so we're going to basically want you to draw this. So as we discussed earlier, you know, the basic outline of a piece of architecture, again, is this floor plan concept. And there's the elevation and the floor plan up here. And then for falling water, I want you to draw this. So what we're going to do, um, this may take a big part of your page. So we'll take this. So we start with the topography, in a sense. Let's see. Okay. And the topography is the actual surrounding land and environment that this house is built in. And uh, what's interesting about the Falling Water House that was built uh, near a stream. So let's say we draw the stream in. And then, as I mentioned, we have these sort of relationship. Here's the, there's a terrace that comes out. Terrace meaning this is where people would stand. And um, you just look out over this beautiful area of the Pennsylvania hillside. There's the master bedroom here. So we'll put the master bedroom in. Let's say that would just start with a little light line. We have a terrace that comes out. He has a little area that's standing here next to the stream. Another terrace. And he has these real interesting. So we just start building. Master bedroom goes out here. Another terrace. Again, he had this. This is the second floor. This is one of the best uh, examples I could find on the internet because it shows the actual uh, the names: the terrace, master bedroom. There's a guest room. Here's another terrace. The landing. In other words, this is part of the second floor. So you have the stairs going down to the first floor and vice versa, stairs going up to what would be a third floor in, the, in a roof section. So he had this, so if you look at this, he had just sort of just lightly put these lines in. Then we can go back and we can just make this a little darker. We could call this the terrace. Okay, just like here. There's a guest room. We just see G R guest room. There's another terrace out this way. This overlooks the the um, this this creek that he's got. We have the master bedroom. We can just abbreviate it with an MB that goes in here. I believe this is probably a fireplace in here someplace, this dark area. He's got another terrace out here. In the entrance, you can even put an arrow for the entrance. So this is his entrance through here. The entrance comes this way. Okay. There we go. And then you can actually darken in some of these lines. He's got these real thick uh, black lines or, or actually these are walls. And you'll see these when you look at the outside elevation. So he has these really dark areas for the structure. Marking these in. And you can get a little detail if you want, but there's, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's doors in here. And how you, how you do a door, which is interesting, you do a door by, um, so this is, if this is a wall here, and this is your doorway, you actually indicate a door like this that it's almost like a, um, 
like a door swing. So that becomes your door like that. So in architecture, that's how you do a door, okay? It's actually sort of like you're swinging it out this way, okay? And then windows, a, a window and a, and a wall would be maybe three lines. So here's your, your wall, but your, your window has just these lines in it. Okay, it indicates a glass, things like that. So just a few few tips here on how to do a piece of architecture. But I think this is, and then of course, then you can go back and darken in this, this creek line that goes like this. Okay. Now here he's got a road. There's a bridge back here. We're going to darken this in. And just make sure it stands out. What's also you can use is, again, that method we used before where you can just take a little, some crosshatch lines and do this. Just indicate the difference between um, uh, water and the building. Also now, he doesn't show it here, but a lot of times you can actually, like I mentioned before, you can put trees in by just doing these little squiggly lines. Almost like little wagon wheels. And that has this feeling for, for, for trees. Shrubbery can be a little bit smaller looking, looking things so for landscaping. But you put these little lines in, it's like that you can actually develop the whole sort of landscaping on this topography, you know, this, this rolling uh, piece of land, and there's your structure. Okay, so that's basically your, your, your floor plan.